Welcome back, Internet, to another episode of Makers on Tap. We're trying something a little different tonight. Or maybe we're not. I don't know. Uh, what are you drinking tonight, Aaron? I had two new glarises before we started. <laughs> and I am now on the Fantasy Factory IPA. Is that the Which one the... with the unicorns and the laser eyes? Yeah, it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm here for it. What are you drinking, Chris? Uh, I am drinking a uh, little bit different. I'm going for a Henry Weinhardt's root beer, which apparently is not available in the state of Illinois. Um, and so I actually had to buy it off of Amazon. Um, but a friend of mine introduced me to it, and I fucking love it. It's really good root beer. Is that a hard root beer or not hard nope, root beer? No, just regular root beer. Really like it. <laughs> like Polis got a a, a, is a Sprecher's root beer. Yeah. yeah, at the Axe Bar, and it was a hard root beer. He's like, "Oh, you need to try." It was the worst thing. Have you ever had <laughs> root beer flavored cough syrup? It was. It, <laughs> it just oh, tasted God. like dirt, and that's about oh, yeah. it. Yeah, you were there. Yeah. It was, it was horrible. It was not good. And, like, he was all for it. He was sold. And I'm just like, dude, no. No, no I think he wanted one of us to drink it. <laughs> I mean, maybe that was it. Maybe he was just pulling one over on all of us. And and I just missed it. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, but... it, it was one of those, like, oh, you know, I've got this and it's so good. Don't you <laughs> want it? Because I'll it was... give it to you. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh... And I am drinking a New Belgium Hop Avenger IPA. It's one of their Voodoo Rangers. It's real, like, fruity, and it's it's cool. It's got a a Superman Voodoo Ranger. Okay. I've actually, I just heard about Voodoo Ranger sponsoring a podcast. Um, And they're, like, actually, like, the sponsored beer of the podcast. Um... And so that hey, New Belgium, <laughs> um, I like all of your beers and we have a podcast that we drink every time. Just saying it's uh, I'm, I'm here for it. I've, I've got I think I have a new Belgium sign at my other house. And so I might be hanging that up in the uh, in the new workshop that I just moved into. So. How many houses you have? I well, I'm in between Three. houses, so I currently have two. <laughs> you know, yeah. When I uh, when I started at Lulzbot, I went and took the New Belgium tour, and th- was talking to one of the guys, and he was telling us that they used to have a climbing wall in their barrel aging facility. It has the tallest ceilings. Yeah, and you could both drink. And climb on the clock. And uh, when they they hit a certain uh, amount of employees, they had to have a new OSHA inspection. So OSHA comes through and they're like, so you got to pick. You can drink (laughs) or you can climb. You can't do both. So obviously they picked drinking because they're a beer factory. And uh, I that was hilarious. That was the drunkest I've ever been after a brewery tour. That was intense. I I've heard good stuff about that one, and then I've heard good stuff about the one in um, where it's in Indiana. What's the one I'm thinking of? Um, three flights. Yeah, three flights. Um, I've heard theirs is yeah. really good as well. Still yeah, never I been did, there. I did that one. It was really cool. I drove by it today. Didn't go. <laughs> Needed to get home. That that's that's a thing we absolutely we, like. I we've been doing this for over a year at this point. We absolutely need to at least at one point go and talk to a brewery. <laughs> like, well, they're right by uh, Project Red and TH Three D. So, like, maybe we should go do a shop video and a brewery tour as a field trip for Makers on Tap. It sounds like a perfect winter activity to me. I'm not opposed to this because I want to talk to Tim anyways about some some potential ideas. We're, we're um, out of show season. What do you think, Tim? Joe, let us know. I know you're listening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what's this new thing we're trying out? Uh, we don't have topics. We're just hanging out. 
Have very, fun very talking about things. Very free form, very hangout, kind of bring up some bring up some fun stuff and just try it out. Like why are we doing this? So um after a year we ran out of stuff to talk about. It got kind of hard. And we all agreed that we wanted to keep doing this as a podcast and like hanging out every week and like talking and talking about making stuff, but the stress of coming up with a topic every week was making it frustrating. Is a it good was, word. It was forcing it. It was yeah. no longer becoming it like it as much as we could make it genuine, it was still it was forcing a topic and it made it less genuine. Um, yeah, the, right. the organicness <laughs> of what made it well I always felt like made this work well was starting to die. I feel like, Mm -hmm. well, and so many of our, like, I I feel like our best ones that we've done have very much been the, like, we are very passionate about this. We have a lot of heart behind this. Um, and like, we're going to get energetic about it. And it's kind of hard to get energetic and have a lot of passion behind something that you're coming up with the day of, and trying to like basically yeah. force a conversation. Like some of our some of our really fun ones we came up with on that Thursday night um, beforehand, and then we were like, we need to save this for the podcast and talk about it. Yeah, we've also all been super busy. Yeah. Life's gotten in the way. Yeah, so no, I, I I like the idea of this. We'll see how it goes. If you're listening and you like this, let us know. Tell us on the twitters. That's probably well, the best place still. And that's that's the other part of it is we actually have had some people say like, hey, we really like when you guys are more friendly with each other and like are more interactive with each other because we can tell there's a friendship there. Um, but like, that's what I want to I want to see more of. So uh, you're getting it. Um, there's going to be a <laughs> lot more swearing. <laughs> <laughs> Might be more drinking. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, no, I, I think we will still do the topic podcast and we'll definitely still do the interviews. They'll just be a little more freeform and, um, you know, they, the topic podcast might happen a little less often. It'll happen like when a good conversation comes up and we don't have to force it. Right. So we're trying to make it continue being fun for us because if it's not fun for us, what's the point in doing this? Yes. So right? it's been increase. It's been decreasingly fun for me the past month or two for all of us. Cause when it's not yes. fun for Aaron, Aaron makes it not fun for us. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm finally at a place where I'm, um, there's a pretty good chance that I'm going to be on pretty regularly again. So I'm, I'm ready to like, now that I'm settled in somewhere and I'm like rooted back in, I have my setup set all back up. Um, I'm excited to like actually be consistent about it again. So yeah, you're like in a room full of printers and stuff. I saw it when you were like pan the camera around earlier. So yeah. Did you see it, Aaron? No. So I got, I got the T-Rex there. I've got the Mars over there and I got a really crappy Da Vinci that I'm going to tear apart over there. (laughs) You should put a duet three in that Da Vinci just just to like Gosh. overkill the shit out of it. So I actually have an idea for that Da Vinci and it's to make it not a 3D printer and it's could be really fun. Um, What's it you know what? Be? Fuck it. I'll talk about that. What, um, what could it be? What could it so, be? Um, you haven't told the, us about this. Yeah, this is. Um, so basically, I got that that Da Vinci from a art class. Um, and, uh, me and a friend went and made, or did a class, uh, a foam smithing class with these middle school art students. Um, and they was just part of this art club in a local school and they just wanted to hang out and learn about foam smithing. And so we, we took them there we did some masks and other cool stuff. Um, and while I was there, I got to talking to the teacher who leads the program. His name's Jay. Um, and he was like, yeah, I've got this 3d printer and it's just not working. It's, it's kind of being crappy and it, it's giving me a bunch of air codes. And I immediately looked and I was like, why the hell do you have a DaVinci? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, well, they, they had a really good school program and they were really willing to work with us. And I go, have they been willing to work with you recently? He goes, no. And I go, uh huh. So, <laughs> um, I was like, you know what? Let's get rid of that. 
And so I was like, I'm going to get you a new printer. Let's, let's just be done. And so I, I first I told him, I was like, I'm going to see if I can fix it. Immediately took it home and went and bought a new printer for him. Um, but I was kind of thinking about it and I was like, man, I, I don't know what I want to do with that just yet. I don't know exactly if I want to try to get it to work, if I want to mod it, if I want to do all these different kind of things. And you know, like, I started thinking about it and I was like, you know what? I really liked building the curing chamber for my resin printer. Um, and kind of the, the short synopsis of that was, um, instead of building a new curing chamber, um, and getting all new wood and lumber and all that kind of stuff, um, I pushed myself to go out into the wild to resale shops and find something that'll work or mod it enough to make it work. Um, and so that way I was trying to renew, reuse as much as possible. Um, it was kind of my own maker push. I was like, I'm going to find something. I want to reuse something. So that way, like I am still making something new, but I'm, I'm making as best an effort to help the environment as much as possible. Um, I like that. and so I was kind of thinking about it with this and I was like, you know what? Like that thing, I, I don't like it as a printer, but it was going to go back into an art class potentially. And he said I could have it, but I was like, I'm not going to use it. So I'm going to remake it into an art display uh, and I'm going to turn it into a um, terrarium with a waterfall in it. So I'm going to like gut that thing to hell and I'm going to put like a statue S diorama in there and make it look like it's really old and decrepit and like have like a little fogger that's blowing mist down onto the bed and like all of this kind of cool stuff to just make it look like this old, like, decrepit thing that's been there this whole time. And so, um, that's, that's the eventual goal for it is to be able to like actually tear that thing apart and make it into a really cool art display essentially. So yeah, no, I'm really excited. They, they don't know yet. And I don't know if he actually listens to the podcast, Jay, if you do, you, the surprise has now been spoiled. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but I'm really excited for it. I told him, I was like the, I was like, your printer's coming. It's, been delayed but not for what you think um but it's really exciting when it's gonna get here because i'm really liking it so far but i was like i gotta plan for your other one but i'm not gonna tell you yet because i'm really excited about it but i want to look into it a little bit more <laughs> but yeah no like um my friend gave me an idea they're like why don't you turn it into an aquarium and i was like i'm pretty sure there's about 20 different things that would kill fish if i put it in there um so maybe not that but i was like terrarium would be kind of cool if I could make it kind of look old and decrepit and have like a, maybe a statue in the middle that was an old print and like make it covered in moss and all that. So hopefully I, I plan to have that done um, with by the end of the school year. So I would like to have that done by May. Um, so that way the kids can see it before they take off. Nice. But that is a, uh, that's my next biggest project that I would love to do. But yeah, so that was that was something that happened just this weekend. Um, I'm not going to go right into my other thing that happened this weekend because I want to hear from you guys because I always talk a lot. No, we don't hear enough from you. <laughs> How about deals? Did you guys see any deals this weekend that you liked? No, I was working the whole weekend. I didn't look at anything. <laughs> well, shoot, Aaron. Did you? Say, well, you got an Apple Watch. I did, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of had to buy two. You, it was the most expensive getting... deal you've ever gotten. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So my wife wanted an Apple Watch, and so she went out to get the Series Three for like 170 at Target, and she loves it. And then the next day, she went to Costco to get something else, then saw the Series Five there in the gold trim. And she's like, fuck, gotta have it. <laughs> <laughs> so now I have a Series 3 Apple Watch. You know. <laughs> it's pretty great. I, I like it. As much as as much as I get crap for having Apple products in the makerspace, I I love it. It's it's a nice watch. I don't know who you people are. <laughs> I mean, okay, so if those were the only deals, um, what about... Hey. Go for it. I had some other deals. Oh, okay. Okay, go yeah. for it. So I actually went to Harbor Freight, much more relevant to the show. Yeah. 
and I got four four foot LED shop lights. Yeah, because uh-huh. you you be doing a whole bunch of your shop. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, cause, so right now I can't see shit. I <laughs> so I'm really hoping this helps. There's no <laughs> such thing as too much light. I, I did I I did spend money, but I go on there. Yeah, yeah. Then I, then I also they also had a uh, a Visa monitor mount for like eight dollars. Yeah, I'm gonna use that on the mini mill so I can get the monitor off the top of it. And I got an eight dollar heat gun. Ooh, there's normally like. 15, 20 bucks. There you, go. you should have bought I mean, two because those things die quick. I I have one in a box and one in a drawer. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, so those are all my deals. Joe? Uh, I bought an E3D Hermes like oh. the, the 30 minutes uh, after it came out because I had to be I don't up. know what that is, but I also bought an oh, E3D a Hermera. Hermera. Yeah, the Hermera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I got that too. And I got some Black Friday uh, uh, titanium uh, heat brakes from Printed Solid, and I, I probably I I didn't end up pulling the trigger on it, but I'm probably going to order some uh, print surfaces from TH3D tonight still because they're like super cheap for flexible bed plates. Okay. Which I never realized how important flex bed plates are, like how great they are. Yeah. Until I got something else that we can talk about later. But um, yeah, those they're printed solid and TH3D both had some incredible deals this weekend for I'm, printing stuff. I'm waiting to see tomorrow because um, I wasn't. I was pretty busy this weekend, so I wasn't able to look on Friday. Um, I ended up passing out most of the day, so I wasn't able to see anything. But I'm probably going to end up getting a Herma on Monday um, just to have one. Also, just to support E3D because they're f- freaking awesome. Yeah, what um, we should do is convert that T-Rex to Hermeros. I'm not opposed to that, in all honesty. <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of interested to see how that would work. Mainly because, like, one of those... So... Okay, you want to? <laughs> you ready for real quick though? Real, real quick. quick. Why would someone need multiple build surfaces, like multiple flex plates? Because there's two different textures, isn't there? There's a smooth yes. texture and there's a uh, rough texture for different there's, types of plastics. There's that. There's different build surfaces for different types of filaments. Like nylon really likes Gecko Tech um, or PEI with glue on it versus something like PLA where you don't want glue so you can get a nice finish on the bottom. Um, yeah, that's a, that's, that's why okay. they're okay. If you're doing a lot of various materials, you can do surfaces based on the material. So, so do the, do the flex plates come with stuff on it from like TH3D or do they just come with the flex plate and you put your material on it? Number two, uh, but they they sell a PEI option and they have their uh, build tech similar option. That's like a polycarbonate based material, and I do have that sheet and I like it a lot. Um, I've printed on that quite a bit because you have to buy that in two parts, don't you? You have to buy that the magnetic bed and then you also have to buy the sheet. Yeah, they they sell the magnetic bed and the stainless steel sheet separately. And okay, wait. Yes. No, because there's a yes. There's... They do sell those separately, and then there's the surfaces that you add on. But they're like, like for the Ender Three, which is what I wanted. One of the things I want to put flex beds on. It's like twenty bucks to do the the flex bed and a sheet. It's really cheap. Yeah, for Black Friday, I was looking at that, it's not normally that cheap. He was uh, with all the deals that he had on. Friday, I was like, it's almost, I'm almost tempted just to get it now, just for when eventually I do get like an Ender or something like that. Cause I'm, I'm kind of looking at a CR 10, uh, S 500, um, just for some certain prints. But I, I like the only thing that's keeping me from it right now is like, the amount of upgrades that I have to do to it. Yeah. Yeah. Plan for a Hemera, plan for 
some sort of bed leveling system planned for a Canovo bed. Like, I mean, that might not work. be actually a bad idea if I get that Herma tested out on the T Rex and then potentially get one for a uh, CR10. Because then I could just like throw that on there and I already know how to do it. That would yeah. not be a bad idea. I okay. Real quick rant. I don't know because I don't think I've talked to you about this. So you're gonna. This is all all 100 percent raw. So you know how I was raw having, dogging it. Raw dog. You know how I was oh. having that freaking problem with my with my Rex. Yeah. And it was just not reaching temp. And it was okay. like it would get about 10, 10 degrees off from uh, target temp, and then it would float. And then it would air out. Which your heater block was loose, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. I don't know what. I still don't know what the heck is wrong with it. You want to know how we fixed it? Bumped the eye up about three quarters. So it like oh okay yeah. So it just jumps over the target temp and then lowers back down. Sure enough, works. I don't still know what's wrong with that printer. <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't like to reach it on its own, but you know what? We threw that eye, we like increased it by about 75% and then started working right away. Is that the eye in the PID? Yep. In the firmware? Yeah. It turned into a demon for a second there. That was fun. <laughs> oh, sorry. You should have you let that go. We could have had Batman <laughs> episode. I'm <Yeah>. Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when we first started doing this and uh, the I, I had some filter show up and like I started to sound like the arrow for a whole thing. No, you know what that told was? Me. That was a member meeting. That wasn't this. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah, that was a makerspace meeting. <laughs> we had a member meeting and you were, it was like in the transition period and like all of us were on it and you just like turned on. It was just like, all right, guys, we're going to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh hey, we have a a new a new director, or a oh. new officer here in our midst. Technic, yeah, oh yeah. I, I I guess that has taken taken place at this point. So I am officially vice president of RCL at this point. Well, welcome, Yay. Veep. Veeping it up. Oh. They have the whole presidential class in the podcast now, right? <laughs> We former president, president, and vice president. Really, what it is is past, president, and future. If we just if we go in like how the presidents have happened, it's really just a rotating door at this point. It is. I don't know if I'm <laughs> ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a smart man talking right there. Right. <laughs> You've just been around us too long. We got to get somebody completely green, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just, just bring him on. Bring him in. Wait, don't talk to him for about six months, and then just have him immediately be a president. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so the so the T Rex is working then. Yeah. So it's it's back up and running. The only reason I'm not printing on it right now um, is the uh, I'm low on plastic. So I'm actually I was I was going to be running up to uh, Micro Center tomorrow what and potentially need? grabbing. Uh, I'm. Mm, what would you print a helmet out of? Uh, not PETG. Yeah, really? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, I would print it out of PETG until you drop it. Okay. I I have had bad luck with drop forces with PETG. It just shatters. Interesting. Um, like that's it, what it, everybody's telling me to print my R2 out of. Well, if you like, like, if you squeeze it, if you slowly deform it, it's great. Okay. If you rapidly deform it, it shatters. And um, I don't know a good way to fix that. Um, and, and I've had it happen with cheap PETGs, and I've had it happen with really good PETGs. I'm not going to name brands, but um, okay. know that I've spent very little money and a lot of money and had similar results. Um the, the maybe 
maybe PC Plus from Snow Labs. Um, maybe. Hmm. It would be interesting to try some of the high strength PLAs. So that's the other thing I've been seeing. Okay. So maybe you'll actually be able to enlighten me with this a little bit. And Aaron, if you want to chip in with this one as well, what the sure. hell is PLA plus? It's, it- um, it's clearly upgraded PLA. <laughs> it's, it's a, for only $5 a month, you get PLA plus and you get all these additional benefits that you wouldn't just get with, standard PLA. It's it's PLA with an ABS baby on it and everyone thinks okay. it's adorable. So it is PLA with baby Yoda. <laughs> yes. No, it, it's PLA that has been modified to be slightly more printable and uh more durable. Um, okay. It, you know everybody's got a different PLA plus. Like, uh, the Studio Labs PLA Plus is what I've been printing my glasses frames out of. And, like, it's very, it's very ductile instead of shattery. And I like it a lot. Um, I haven't tried the heat resistance on it yet, but the ductility seems very good. And the layer uh, adherence is very good. What about Um, exposure to UV? Because that's a big thing with PLA, isn't it? Uh, that's a big thing with a lot of plastics. Basically, like, if you're going to expose it to UV, you better paint it or you better print it out of ASA. Okay. Um, or like Mad-X, which is E3D's modified ASA for printability. Um, which is really good stuff. Um, that might actually not be a bad option for R2. Okay. Uh, we, we, I mean, I, we, we, we know some people. We should talk to some people about that. There's, there's definitely, Do we? like... It, it's, a, <laughs> it's an interesting question because R2 is a large format print that needs resolution, right? Yes. So it's not something that you're going to print on a super volcano. No. Uh, it, not with that attitude. It, Unless you want to not. sand the hell out of it, no. And well, even I mean, then, Super Volcano no. has 0. .6 nozzles, actually, which... Does it really? Yeah, which we could definitely test. That would be an interesting... Um, I'd be interested to see what comes out of that. I have those here. So uh, that could be a test. Um, if I could get somebody to sponsor my R2 build, I'd be really fucking happy. <laughs> figure out what you need first. But... Um, a 500 by 500 print bed and uh, a lot of plastic. Well, a lot of plastic is all, is that's a thing. Um, I don't know. I would want to. I would want to print R2 out of nylon personally. That's, that's a flexi X. R2. <laughs> no, I'd want to print out a good nylon like 910. Uh, but that's an expensive R2. <laughs> that's a I mean, really. Is nylon sandable? Totally. It's, yeah. sandable, it's dyeable. It's not Ooh. super paintable, but it's, you can dye it with RIT dye. I mean, can you prime it and then paint it? Never tried. Okay. Because I got that really nice filler primer that Andy gave me, and that seems to work on just about anything that I print with. Never tried to get anything to stick to it before. <laughs> we should try it. Um, yeah. But... Uh, there's some, uh, like matter hackers has a high temp PLA and like their PLA pro that is supposed to be annealable. Yeah. Um, that might be an interesting option. Um, I, for like things that I, I need a lot of stiffness and strength out of, I really, really like the snow labs, uh, PC plus carbon fiber or carbon fiber PC plus. Um, it's relatively cheap. It's very strong and it's extremely printable as long as you keep it dry. The one point or 1.75 PC plus carbon with fiber. carbon fiber. Yeah. How much so, is that? Like how much is on that spool? That's, that's kilogram. kilogram. 
So I might make stuff. some. You know what? I might get that and make some masks out of that. And see how it is. Because I got another project um, for the troop that I have to make some masks for, which that one I'm actually excited for. It's really good stuff. You just got to keep it dry. That uh, might I've be. Got a dehumidifier in this room that'll fire up whenever it wants. <laughs> well, like if you're going to do a really long print, like you might want to print it out of a food de- or, uh, dehydrator. Oh, like Josh has got? Yeah, or like I've got, or Aaron's got. Uh, the Rosewell $35 food dehydrator is great. And um, if you order it, bring the trays over to my house and we can laser cut them. And it becomes a filament dryer really easily. I wish you told me that before I spent all my fucking time with a Dremel. Well, you did that before I figured <laughs> it goddamn out. goddamn trays out. Because like, you had bought yours first, and then I watched you do that. And then I bought yeah, mine like awful. a week later. And then God. I uh, I set up a template on my laser, and I, I cut the tray profile out. And then I, I refocused it, and then I cut all the trays out in like 10 minutes. And it was great. So wait, <laughs> yeah, that, that was easy, like 45 minutes of my time <laughs> with a Dremel and a cutoff wheel. Is it? And then it's still all sharp as shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's nice and smooth. Those trays Jeez. are definitely polystyrene. It smelled terrible, but. Yeah. But with that dehydrator, you can actually use the, the print dry uh, filament and drying like guides, guidelines as far as temp and time for filament. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure it's just a white labeled this dehydrator for a hundred dollars yeah pretty sure it is too. but then they have custom trays so then you can fit like two spools in it yeah so you just put the spool in that and then have it drag out of that and then yeah right into the nozzle yeah so oh. you had like a little did you add a little holy do i haven't yet I, i've just been pulling it out of the handle hole <laughs> and just letting it nice. spin and you know that's worked my Fair plan enough. is to build a little tray with bearings and have a hole that comes out that keeps it in line with the spool that's fun um you know but it's my plan we all know that won't actually happen right <laughs> time but I, um my interesting thing is i've been I've done I've done two things that I'm excited about. One, uh, I've been beta testing the Prusa Mini, and yeah. uh, it's been phenomenal. I hate you. <laughs> uh, well, you know, you can come play with it. <laughs> I've been printing with it nonstop since uh, my birthday. It showed up on my birthday, and. Uh, it's it's just been a little a phenomenal little printer. There's some firmware things that still need to be fixed, which is, um, you know, fine. But even with those firmware things, it's been printing nonstop. Check out my Twitter feed to see the prints that I've been doing with it. But that's what turned me on to flex beds. I haven't used them before this, and I never want to not use them again. Like all of my printers are getting flex beds. I mean, that's it. Yeah, like I I. I'm kind of sad because like I've been watching all of your stuff on Insta and on Twitter and it's like, shoot, I'm getting one of these just to give it away. And now I kind of don't want to give it away. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, it's e- even with the Bowden, uh, it's been printing like super tiny details. I've been printing the um, Luby 3D dragon chest pieces. Yeah. Uh, so Louise is super detailed. SLA designed dragon parts and it's just printing away. Um, I, I'm excited to try it with some smaller nozzle diameters. Uh, they sent me a 0.25 to try with it and they've got 0.25 nozzle profiles in Prusa Slicer. So I'm, I'm excited to try those out. But so far I've been doing 0.4 with just like the standard Prusa Slicer profiles that they sent me. I haven't tweaked anything. And Jeez. it's just printing away. Like yesterday, I started a job with eight uh, chess pawns. Literally hit print and left. Um, didn't even wait for it to preheat. And came back to half finished. 
wonderful little chess pieces. It's been a great printer. So I can't wait to see that thing hit the wild and print more with it. So, but the other thing that I did that I was really, really excited about last week is I have made more progress on the large format CNC router. Um, yeah. So oh. I finally got my, I finally like pulled the trigger a few weeks ago and I ordered 10 and a half foot long linear rails that are split in the middle. So it's two 1600 millimeter linear rails that are ground in the center. So they're joinable. And um, one of my big hangups with this project has been, how am I going to join those rails? Uh, because with a linear profile rail, any amount of misalignment would create a hiccup or the truck just would not go over it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I've been trying to figure it out and I came up with a bunch of different janky methods. Like, uh, you know, I could just bolt them to the table and use the trucks or use the gantry itself to align them. That was a not, not going to happen. I figured it out really quick as soon as I unpacked them. And, um, so I came up with some other ideas that I didn't do. What I ended up doing was I bought um, some long aluminum flat, those half inch by uh, two and a half inch aluminum flat. And once I had that, I was like, how am I going to align these still? Because linear rails, no matter where you get them from, no matter whether they're China or they're THK, which is like the top end or high one, they still need a flat um, reference surface to press up against because they can be bowed in any direction. Um, that's the first thing they, they teach you if you start designing with linear rails. So I knew I needed some sort of flat surface to align them on. So what I ended up doing was I set up a router table in my garage and with an end mill in it and I stepped over a slot that was the width of the rails with my router table that was just like a 32nd of an inch deep or like 40 thousandths of an inch deep. So I manually milled a slot into these 10 and a half foot long pieces of aluminum. And it actually turned out pretty good. The, the, um, Height is a little wavy. It's not exactly what I would want, but the straightness is really good. Um, and then uh, I was trying to figure out how I was going to drill all my holes because I needed to drill 150 60 millimeter spaced holes for each side of the machine. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's the right way to do that? And um the manual way that I had come up with was to clamp them in aligned to my uh, slot that I had milled and transfer punch all of them, which is like a center punch that is sized for a specific hole diameter. So it comes in, they come in like sets of, uh, that are done in 64th increments. Mm -hmm. So it, you set it in the center of the hole that you want to find the middle of. And you get the, the one that's the closest tight fit. And then you center punch it just like you would use a normal center punch. Right. Um, and then I was just either going to manually hand drill them with a cordless drill, which seemed like a really bad idea or use a, my shitty drill press or, or maybe the drill press at the maker space. If I was feeling really froggy and a friend of mine happened to be talking to me and I was telling him about this and, trying to come up with ideas. He was a fellow machinist. And he's like, just bring him to my house. I have a bridge port that is set up between two doorways so we can span it with very long pieces of metal like this. So I, uh, I got to bring these over to my friend's house and uh, run these on his manual bridge port, which this was the first time that I've, I've gotten to run a bridge port mill since I cared about machines. Like, I ran them in college when I was just, like, a shit bag and didn't care about what I was doing and just needed to get a grade. And I'm really mad at past Joe for not appreciating what that machine shop offered me. Um, but getting to run these uh, last week was 
a really great experience and really made me realize that like I really want a nice manual mill in my life. Yeah. So, hey, president and future vice president, we should get a bridge port for the makerspace. Just saying. I don't know where we're going to put it. That's the, that was my first question. That that is a, that is something to be dealt with maybe in the future officer class. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um but we we drilled all those holes and uh power tapped them with the bridge port in like an hour and a half, like 300 holes. 300 M5 holes. And I didn't break one tap and I didn't break one drill bit, which is like impressive to me that we power tapped all those. Um so now my linear rails are all bolted down and the trucks roll over the seam with like barely a click now and I can move on to future less hard things with the large format CNC router project maybe this week. Hopefully. So That's awesome. Yeah, I'm very excited for how this project is coming together. Like everything else that I have to figure out right now is like preference stuff, not like overcoming an engineering challenge. Right. So I'm excited. That's kind of where I'm at with my stuff. Aaron, I saw you got the uh, a lot of your laser cut stuff done. That's pretty fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. what's going on with your e core? Yeah. So if you're following me on Twitter, uh, I've been posting a lot of up- updates on my based on workshop build. And the first thing I've been working on is uh, getting my M Blazer core laser like fully set up with a custom built uh, enclosure with like a vacuum uh, exhaust setup so that I can just like run it and like not make my house all smoky. Cause I wasn't, that's why I haven't used it at all this year is cause I didn't have anything to properly exhaust it. So as of tonight, like right before we started recording, I finally got it all done and tested. So that's super exciting. Um, yeah, it looks also, great. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm super pumped. Um, I managed to cut out or engrave and cut out my Twitter handle, and I wood glued it to the top of my lid so that if I ever take any pictures and you can. Ah, so, that the maker makes brand. sense what that is. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, what else? Yeah, so in the past couple of weeks, I uh, also built two two foot by eight foot workbenches that are in the kind of like the corner of my workshop. That's where the majority of my making is going to be. So like the lasers on one of those, then I'm going to have my printers on another. Um, so those are using the two by four basics um, workshop legs, which are like a high strength resin. Uh, legs and they have like little shelves and built in pocket holes in the molding. So all you have to do is add two by fours and it just screws together and it auto aligns itself, which was kind of what I really liked about it. Interesting. Yeah. So it was really simple to put together and you only need to cut your lumber at right angles. So like, it's really easy to yeah cut it and put it together. I really love those legs for like a quick build. Yeah. Like it, it took me only took me like an hour or two to put them together. Oh, it was super nice. Um, what else? I've been working on getting my network stuff simplified and set up. So I have uh, my old NAS server is now on Open Media Vault, and that's fully done and and configured. All my data is now restored on there, so I'm back up and running with that. Uh, just today, I got. Pi hole set up again on a Raspberry Pi. That's such a great um, project so name. <laughs> right? Yeah, so that's blocking all my ads on my network. Um, I did print out. I found this really awesome project of a guy who is uh, creating DIN rail mounts for all of the Raspberry Pi products and some other SBCs. So you can just print them out for your specific version of the Raspberry Pi, and it will mount to a DIN rail. He also has a couple stands, so you can actually like screw the DIN rail to some printed stands, and now you have a mobile DIN rack. I will. So I did that. I will say there's some pretty cool um, DIN rail mountable pie capes that are like breakouts 
with screw terminals on Amazon that I've gotten in the past that they have made some projects really easy. That's what I used for the control system for my uh, chameleon terrarium terrarium project. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really like those. So if you if you need anything that like breaks out your GPIOs, check into those. Hmm. Yeah, I was looking into the CNC shields or hats for the pies because I've been taking uh, another look at that Linux CNC for Raspberry Pi. Yeah, and uh, one or two people in in one of the forum threads has software stepping working relatively well on the Pi Four. So I kind of want to try that just because I don't have to deal with buying a Mesa board. What it, I've already got the Pi. What does relatively well mean? I mean, it was like 30,000 microsecond delay lag, which is like mid-range. Yeah. Like the POSs were like 20-some thousand. Yeah. Some of the other desktops I tested at the Makerspace were up to like 35, 45,000. Sometimes 50. And for, <laughs> yeah, and the and the wiki says fifty is kind of the cutoff for you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah. So thirty seemed reasonable. Yeah. Like. Yeah, that's really reasonable. If, if I can just use GPIOs to, you know, send the signals to the stepper motors. Hmm. So I'm gonna look a little bit more into that. Hmm. But if if it becomes too complex, I'll, I'm gonna get uh, Mesa actually makes a new uh, Pi hat. That's a Mesa board. That will that will do the has a built-in FPGA and it will do your um, step generation for you. So I bought I saw that when I bought my seven i ninety two, but I wasn't sure how well it was supported. And e- even my seven i ninety two is questionable on how well it's supported. Like, um, it's super new. Yeah, like even even when you bought yours. According to that forum, that it looks like they only just merged the firmware into Linux CNC like the past month. Yeah. Well, it, it, what I found out was um, like it, when you're doing your steppers with a parallel port in Linux CNC, there's step config. There's PCNC config or PNC config for Mesa cards. It doesn't work for a lot of them because um, there's so much complexity in how those files get generated that the guy that was maintaining that project was just like, guys, it, it, this is where it is. I'm out. <laughs> 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 it, it just got to be too too big of a project. So there's yeah. a lot of manual configuration that has to happen with the Mesa cards, but um, it doesn't seem that bad. It just seems like it needs some focused time. So that's what's going to run my big CNC is my Mesa card. It's a, it will get that focus time. Yeah. So as, as part of my workshop build, I'm trying to figure out how I want things to run. And like when I bought your mini mill, you had a BCNC on it. Yeah. And I got angsty and I put CNC JS on it to try out. How's that working? I haven't actually got around to trying oh. it. But now it's like, if I'm going to put the time and effort into learning something for this workshop, I want it to be something that I can replicate to other machines or like use at the makerspace. Yeah. So I, I want all my CNC machines to be Linux CNC now. Because if I'm going to spend that time, I want to like actually gain something from it. And like if, if I'm going to dig deep into Linux CNC config, like how that stuff works and like, you know, writing my own HAL files and stuff like that. Yeah. That will, that will transfer to any other Linux CNC machine that I, and then that's like, that's like a good industry standard software to use. Like no one's running CNC JS for well, <laughs> important things. And, and there's like, HAL isn't just Linux CNC. Like HAL is anything that uses a hardware abstraction layer. So, like, yeah. it's actually a thing that is, it shows up in robotics, it shows up in all kinds of places. So, it's it's not a bad skill to pick up. So, yeah. so that's kind of, that's, that's kind of why I want to take the effort to, or put the time in to convert that mini mill to Linux CNC. And I like to do it with the Pi, just so it's 
everything can be self-contained inside that machine. That'd be super cool. Let me know how I can help with that. I support that. Far more than I supported you running CNCJS. <laughs> <laughs> it looks way nicer than Linux CNC. It does. It's beautiful. There's other interfaces for Linux CNC. There's not there's far more than just Axis. Yeah. And that and that is what it, is interesting to me too is that you can you know, write your own interfaces in Python, right? Yeah. And load them up. So that seems like a really interesting avenue for me as well. Yeah. And that's if I hated everything else, I could that, that, make my own. That's something that um, more people are talking to me about than have in the past. So, like, that might become a thing. Hmm. All right. So, you know. That'd be, be fun to par- partner with you on that. That would be, it would be super fun. But, but Yeah, but between your machine experience and my programming experience. Yes. My lack of programming experience. <laughs> and my lack of machine experience. <laughs> Our powers combined. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find some fun uh, projects to uh, learn how to actually do machining on. That's fun. I'm trying to find fun projects to learn programming on. Yeah, well, I've given you a bunch. And And I've just been really stupid busy the last couple weeks, but I'm I I'm catching up and I'm working on like some other things that are like ancillary to those things that you're sending me. It like it kind (laughs) of makes sense. I, 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 I I've been working on these. Python based G code generator things. And um, I made a bunch of headway on them last night. And then I was feeling like really good about it. And then I realized that I defined variables, a whole bunch of them in the wrong place, which completely changed their syntaxes. And then I got pissed off and I closed my laptop and I went to sleep. Uh, so it's not the end of the world, but it's still annoying. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But, you know, this is this is learning and this is why we do these things so that we can uh try but you know, with my poorly or with my variables defined in the wrong place, I'm de- generating usable code at the moment, which is cool. So it's just a small amount of usable code that isn't to the the point that I need it to be. <laughs> Get there. I am getting there. It's I'm just working through some things. So, but yeah. Well, we're uh we're at like episode length, and we're a half hour later than I wanted to be at nighttime. So that's cool. Yeah. O- only a half hour. Do you guys have other things that you wanted to like complain about or talk about or? I mean, I definitely have one other thing that I want to talk about, but I almost want to bring somebody else on that with me. Um, oh, I know what you're talking about, and I agree. So I think that we might try and do that next week. Um, Works for me. Yeah. Well, I think that our schedules are free to be able to do that. Um, yes. So I think we're going to try and do that next week. Okay. Cool. Aaron? Marlin 2.0 just dropped. What? Like just now? Seven hours ago. Oh. Well, that's what I get for working all weekend. I, I got to do that. Well, I just I just saw it on Twitter. Even though I've been on Twitter all day and I didn't see it. We should get Scott on the show. We should. That would be fun. We're totally not a 3D printing podcast, by the way. If you want to come on the show and talk about things that aren't 3D printing, I'd love to have you. It's just the thing that I'm real into right now for the <laughs> last five are. years. Uh, <laughs> one of my friends that I met through 3D printing has like completely given up on 3D printing and is now like focused diehard on blacksmithing, and I love it. <laughs> I'm here for it. Nice. So that sounds awesome. I am super jazzed with the blacksmithing being done at the makerspace. Yeah. Yeah. So much cool we have stuff. A, we have a couple guys who are, uh, well, we have one, a relatively new member who is, who saw that we had a, just a tiny anvil 
He's like, oh, cool. Can I make a tiny forge? I'm like, you do that. And he did. And he's been just making all kinds of neat stuff. And now he's like, we should get a bigger forge. And uh, so he and a, another couple other people have been making a custom forge out of a propane tank. Yeah. And it's almost done. And they welded a cart together for it. And it, I, I'm just super jazzed at how far they've come with that. Yeah, it's it's pretty close. Like it's, I I want to say they were getting ready to like paint it or prime it or something. Yeah. Um, and then they were saying like, yeah, then we'll be able to just start test firing it and see what happens. I'm like, all right. <laughs> and it's they've it, been like, firing I, the burners, so I well, it's it's super cool because like this is one of the first things that like a lot of us have not had any interaction with. Yeah. Um, like this has been a very member oriented project and we have very had very little oversight to it. And yes, that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> it's been great. Like it's it's members finally starting to make the makerspace their own. But yeah. Yeah, I uh this this is the first tool that's coming to the makerspace that I have zero level of comfort with, and I'm pretty excited about it. Yeah. But. Well, all right. I think if that's all you guys got. I'm good. Yep. Everybody should keep making stuff. This is the end of the podcast. <laughs>